So Acts 19, 21. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain na man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. So his name got pulled out the hat, busted. And so, well, I don't know, let's not say it's That's the guy's name. The guy is a silversmith. So he has an, a personal investment on this doctrine. You feel me? Okay. So then it says, 25th verse, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our what? Wealth. Any elder of any worth in Peter 5 say they in it not for filthy lucre sake. These brothers is about wealth. So they say, by this craft we have our wealth, 26 verse, moreover ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So they was mad at Paul because what Paul was teaching was busting up their uh, investments, their craft, their wealth, the retirement plan, whatever. It's the same spirit would be going on, brother. Who was doing this when Christ showed up teaching at the temple and synagogues? The scribes, the Pharisees, the money changers. Christ's doctrine alone was blowing up their little racket they had. Overcharging Israel. Because there was laws in place. If your cattle, if the way be too far to bring your offering or cattle or whatever to the, to the place, you can redeem that and turn it into money. And then bring the money to the temple. These guys was usury, playing games interests. Christ said, my father's house is not a den of thieves, it's a house of prayer. And he beat them down, brother. There was no, wait a minute, democracy, he beat them down. That's the one time he gave him a little precursor of, of when he comes back. They want to, wait a minute, are you the son of God? They want to ask him that, they knew. He whooped them. And threw the money change, threw them right out on their ear, bro. So how dare you turn the most highest thing into uh, some lucrative business? It's wickedness. So then they say in uh, 27, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised. And her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So the guy stirred up a whole controversy, but what was it really based on? His pockets. Sounds familiar? You got brothers that be stirring up stuff, distraction misdirection, play games with the scriptures and people, oh, that ain't right. That ain't really? Believe in the hype when really the guy is about himself. He's about his pockets. He's never about promoting the most high, Christ, the scriptures. Everything is money. Show me one Passover in the Bible where they collected money from the people so they can give you a garment when you showed up. It's wickedness, brother. You come with your own garment, brother. See? It's madness. But that's what I'm talking about, the things that 
they indoctrinated us with, brother. It's so when we look back at it, it's like, man, I wonder why my family thought I was in a cult. Because it'd be witchcraft, mind control, brother. Here, you thinking you breaking scriptures. Well, upon further review, it's a guy quoting scriptures. The Wizard of Oz. He's not the scriptures, brother. He's the guy behind the curtain perpetrating the fraud. The Most High is the Supreme Being, and Christ is our Lord and Savior. Okay. Okay. So, so what I was saying earlier about, you know, the brother Yaikov giving out free CDs to us and all that, and then we learned that from Yaikov and the brothers, uh, that particular brother and Sa'ad giving out free CDs. The praise goes to the Most High in Christ. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so you're supposed to do that. Right? right? How you going to charge money? That's That should be like normal. That's like, you know, somebody coming behind you, hold the door for him. I mean, how you going to charge money, man? You hold the door for the guy that you handing out. Come on. That's, our reasonable service is to be there for one another. That's our reasonable service. And don't let it get twisted. Because we don't believe in ha having the image of Christ. Don't let it be twisted that, that we have a hatred for, for black. For black. For, like, we don't like blacks. We got a problem with a black image of Christ. Don't let it get twisted. You understand? Because that's what, if you don't believe in the black, that's because you, you mad Christ is black. No, how about the scripture? Say, when you read it, I just want to read this one verse. This is Ecclesiastes 30. 17, I'm just going to write to the point. Ecclesiastes 17 and 26. This ain't about hating the, the fact that Christ is black. It has nothing to do with that. That's, that's Only a twisted mind would try to promote something like that. That's what Demetrius did. Twist the story. Right. So that's what Demetrius was doing. He was twisting the story. To get people in the uproar, get them on the seat, get them spellbound with words, witchcraft of words. So we, so we understand, you know, we putting away that image of Christ because it's idolatry. It has nothing to do with the fact that Christ was a man of color. But don't let it get it twisted. So this is one scripture that popped in my mind, 26 verse, yeah. Ecclesiastes 17, 26. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health. And hate thou abomination vehemently. That's why we put away the image of Christ. Whether it's white or whatever, well, white for sure, but even the dark image. We got to put it away because the Most High said that's an abomination, that's idolatry. Oh, it's just an image. Well, the Most High said we're not to make an image. Well, we don't worship it. Same excuses that Israel gave with the white Jesus. I don't worship it. It's just a picture. So don't let it get twisted. So now, let's finish up in 1 Peter 5. We're not supposed to be in this for filthy lucre's sake. Not for type of, any type of dishonest gain or money. We're not supposed to be in this for that. Look at the example of Christ. All the great works that he did. He never charged. He gave. He he fed. He, he he fed the multitudes with bread and fish, from a small amount. You don't see the disciples take, taking the collection, but here we gonna take collections for ourselves. See, and and when people are trying to make money off you, everything they do, they got a hidden agenda behind it. If they promote, like that's like we trying to make. Make sure you brothers go to college and get good jobs. It's not, I'm not saying that because I want you to, to be able to pay your bills and, and, and you know, be able to provide for you and your family. There's a hidden agenda behind it. Got to make money. That's how it's always been in this truth, man. It's always been like that. Brothers have hidden agendas and ulterior motives. So they twist and pervert the scriptures, and with good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. 
where you commit idolatry and you got 20 scriptures to back up that you wrongly divide the word of truth. So all you got to go is to the first commandment, the commandments, that's it, that knocked that out. Going to Maccabees, going to this, Mosai this, and that Mosai said none of that. Those are tradition of men. See, when the foundation is the worship of men, the breakdowns is going to go into the worshiping of men. But when the foundation is Christ is the head, then we're going to see, just like Christ said himself, these scriptures testify of me, they are written of me. Why did Christ say, why call me Lord, Lord, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, don't do the things which I say. So they're going to throw the word Yahweh Shai, Christ, the Most High Christ. They're going, they have to use the Most High Christ name to get the people to start listening. But if you're simple and you're a man pleaser, you're going to end up breaking the law of the Most High. And that's what we did. We were young, naive, young brothers when we first came in this. And for now, it's 20-something years later. For some of us, 15, whatever, we have that leaven among us. We got to purge it out. That's why, that's why we started in Job. Let's go. Uh, was there more in Peter? First, Okay, let's finish Peter, then we'll finish Job, and then we'll go to um, the other scripture. So verse 3, 1 Peter 5 and 3. Neither is being lords over the Most High's heritage. That's another spirit that's been in Israel that was implemented back then. Lording over the Most High's heritage. Yeah, so we did that. You, you, you can't travel here. You can't do this. We're, it's like the job of the elders is supposed to teach the law, not to, to be like the Pharisees and now control men, control men. We're not to be lords over the Most High's heritage, see? The, the elders and teachers are supposed to look as the sheep, as the most high's heritage. But no, that's my church. That's my heritage. That's my congregation. What did it say? Neither is being over Yahweh, God's heritage. This church here. Whose heritage, whose church is this? A rum you? Or the most high sheep? We all the most high sheep. We all brethren. And we have to be in fear how we deal with the Most High by not trying to make money off the people and lording over them, using fear and intimidation tactics on the people that if they don't follow your teachings, you go, you, you go on to serve another God. If you don't deal with our church and you deal with another church, you going off, brother. Don't deal with no. We got the truth. Didn't we used to say that? If you want to learn the truth, you got to come through our church. You got to learn through us. I mean, back in UPK, the doors to the kingdom of heaven is door, that door right there. That thing is an Applebee's restaurant now. <laughs> UPK. So they talking about the doors to the kingdom is through them doors there. Come on, man. Most I don't dwell in temples made with. He dwell amongst Israel that of a contrite and broken spirit, those that fear and tremble his word. The Most High said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Here you he am. Peter, John, and James would bow down to the earth when this is going down, brother. So, so when you read Peter, John, James, later on, Paul, and the disciples, who are they promoting? Yeah, I was of Christ. Who we've been promoting? Man. But we'll throw in Hamashiach, yeah, I was shy, yeah, I was shy this, and Christ this, and we, yeah, but we're taking his name in vain. Because we can't put the Most High's holy name in Yahweh Shai's name, and we we got a hidden agenda behind it that's taking the name of the Lord in vain, brother. We cannot put the Most High's name and, not, and, and we got evil agenda behind it. The Most High will not hold us guiltless. He will not hold, he, he will deal with us. You cannot put the Most High's name and you dealing wickedly. So we're not to be lords over the Most High's heritage. So what happened was, well, how we used to do it. We would have the elders and then the men under them and then what? It would be like a police force in Israel. So you got Israel walking on eggshells. They're afraid. They're more afraid of the elders being mad at them than fearing and trembling the Most High. That's their spirit that was in here. We got to purge it out. We were like bullies, man. Bullies. Like with big billy clubs. Scriptures just wham, slamming, brother. You're out of order. Condemning people. 
Brothers have questions. They can't question it. Christ said he didn't stop nobody from asking them questions. They came right and left coming to questions. Christ didn't stop them. They didn't understand something. Christ wasn't there, you know, what do you deal with another doctrine? You know, so we got to put that off, right? That spirit that if you don't deal with us, you deal with another Israelite group, you going backwards. Then what we're saying is we got the truth. We can't say those things, man. How can we say that? How can we, out of all the wrong things we've done in this truth, how can we say such things to people? And we're not taking heed to Matthew 23. So we're not, neither is being lords over the Most High's heritage, like the Pharisees and scribes, they lorded over the Most High's heritage because they had the people under the stranglehold of their traditions of men. And if they broke these traditions of men, the people were in fear of being put out of the synagogue and thinking that if they got put out the synagogue, that they're going to receive, uh, how you say, damnation or condemnation from the Most High in Christ. And that spirit was, when you read in John, they were afraid to confess Christ if, because of fear of being put out of what? The synagogue. Tell me that spirit ain't in Israel now. Were you afraid to question reincarnation or some other devil doctrine? And if you did, you would be put out. So to, to keep the peace, you went along with the lies, but we lose out on the kingdom. That ain't good, man. Any man that don't understand something should ask questions. And we shouldn't browbeat them or act, act like they off. If we got the truth, well, why are we going to get all huffy puffy? What are we trying to protect? But when brothers have got, like, that's why that, that you got hidden uh, interests involved, that's when the Lord and over the heritage come. But being ensembles unto the flock, we're to be an example of Yahweh Shai to the people. What, the, what we read in Matthew, he that is greatest among you, let him be your servant. But Israel got it the other way around. The elders and leaders are ministered to. And they want to travel. They want to travel here. They want to travel here. They want to go here. They want to go to Jamaica. They want to go to, to, to you know, travel the world. Who's got, who's got to pay for it, though? These guys don't have jobs. Scripture says if a man don't work, he don't eat. So they want all this money off who? You got to step up, brother. You got to come through. You got to pay your tithes and offerings. Well, number one, you ain't the priest. That Levitical order is done away with. This offering and tithe, that wasn't, the priest didn't get the money and then go to Syria and uh, teach traditions of men and then come back with the, with the tithes and offerings that they were given. They was doing the office of, that they was given to, teaching the commandments of the Most High, bringing forth righteous judgment. They didn't go to Greece and fornicate and teach traditions of men. And they come back, oh, y'all need to step up, y'all need to give us money. That's what was happening. So you got the, the teachers, they're doing all this traveling teaching. Who got to flip the bill? The congregation. They're the ones working 40 hours a week, barely surviving week by week. But, well, I've been in the truth 25 years. You don't know, brother. You got to support the truth. Blah, 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 blah. And then brothers think that if they don't support, like the Most High is going to take their job away from them. So here they're giving all this money. Get a job. The scripture says, my son, lead not a beggar's life. Do, don't do this for filthy lucre's sake. If you don't have the money to do it, then, then you are doing your own will. If you got to take the money from the people to take all these trips to teach the word, then you shouldn't be doing it. That's how simple that is. You're doing your will. You're not doing the most high. Because if it was on the most high's will, the money would be there. Because you got a job. You understand? And you're doing the work of the most high, and the most high open it. But what do we do in the past? The congregation pay for everything. That's out of order, man. The scripture said that's, that's not being a, a, a ensemble unto the flock at all, man. So this spirit got to go from Israel. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So when is, the crowd, when is that crown of glory going to be given? When the chief shepherd appears. Has he appeared yet? No. So should we be talking about we in the kingdom now? We there? We going to do this and that in the kingdom? We going to take the kingdom? Remember when you say that? We going to take the kingdom. 
Christ said, unless a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. So are we born again yet? Or we have we truly put off the old man and put on the new? How can that be when we battle in lust and anger and, and, and conforming to the world? We're sinners ourselves, but we're going we already going to act like we there and then we're going to condemn others and act like they're not going to make it. They're going to be destroyed. The most High going to deal with us, man. He's going to deal with that pride. He's going to deal with it. He's going to deal with that pride. And if we don't humble ourselves. Like John the Baptist said, the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is going to be chopped down, chopped up, and cast into the lake of fire. Thrown in the fire. We got to bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. Just because we're the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob don't mean that we're going to make it to the kingdom. Just because we've been in the truth 20 years. What's 20 years? That's what I want to know. 20 years. Like That's some, like some badge of honor. Wow, this brother in the truth, 20 years. 20 years of what? Traditions of men. Yeah, the silver anniversary, 50 years. Listen, Joshua was there in the captivity in Egypt. He saw the plagues. He kept the Passover. He left on the exodus out of Egypt. He walked through the Red Sea. Wandered in the wilderness 40 years. Crossed the Jordan. Israel got their land by inheritance. And what did he say? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to continue to follow the most. Joshua, now that's, that's, now that's a man that you can say, I'm going to deal with that guy. Because this man, most, what did most I say about Joshua and Caleb? They have another spirit. Another spirit. Not like them other witness, the other guys that they went when they came with the evil report. And the most I said, they have wholly followed me. They have continued to be faithful unto me. That's why out of all the men that was numbered that came out of Egypt, 20 and up, only Joshua and Caleb made it to the promised land. Everybody else died. See? So, but when you read about Joshua and Caleb, they feared the Most High. They trembled at the word. They didn't never promoted themselves or exalted themselves. So we can't act like we're there yet. Remember Peter, Lord, if you die, I'm going to die with you. Christ said, you're going to deny me three times. I mean, come on, man. We, we, we got to humble ourselves. The scripture says, he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. We're not there yet. That's why I say, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. We're going to receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away if we abide in the fear and trembling of the Most High's commandment faithfully unto the end. So there is no promoting of self and condemning others in that process. There is no lording over the Most High's heritage in that process. There is no making money off the people in that process. Because we're not seeking that uncorruptible crown. We're seeking a corruptible crown when we're doing it the other way. Here. That's off. Around. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, this we read this one last week. It's is similar to Job. You going back to Job, right? Yep. Okay. Ecclesiastes is four twenty two. It's like one. It's one verse. Actually, it's more than one verse. But Ecclesiastes is four twenty two. So it says, um, what happened? Something happened. All right, so somebody want to call him off for y'all do it. Yeah, okay. All right, Ecclesiasticus 4.22. Accept no person against thy soul, and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. So when it says a person against your soul, meaning this person's coming in a manner that's going to cause you, your soul to be destroyed from the Most High. It's contrary to you. It's not for your benefit. For example, for brother say, oh, it's all right, it's just a ham sandwich. And you accept that. What did the Most High say about ham or pork? It's an abomination. 
hate thou abomination vehemently. See, the Lord hateth all abomination, and those that fear him love it not. But you accept that, and say, oh, well, you know, just this one time we under grace. Now what? Foolishness. 23. And refrain not to speak when there is an occasion to do good, and hide not thy wisdom in her beauty. Look at that. So we can't be, well, that's brother so-and-so. When that's the time to speak the scriptures. Right? That's the time to say, well, hold on, brother, wait a minute. Why, why, why we got these t-shirts again? The scripture says this. And you did your job. It ain't say, well, if they disagree, then don't do it. They asked you whether they agreed or disagreed. It just told you, refrain not to speak the beauty or the wisdom in the proper time. That's not for up to you to, to control people and then worry about how they think, what they feel. See, brother, you're coming at me because you've always had jealousy for brother, please. You're going to do the scripture or not? Stop playing. This ain't the, the psycho babble. It's foolishness, brother. Okay, then the 424. For by speech wisdom shall be known and learning by the word of the tongue. So how do people ever going to learn something? if nobody corrects the next man. We're all respecting persons. We ain't gonna learn. We're scared to speak up. We're hiding the wisdom. See? Now, this is when you're not supposed to speak. 25th verse. In no wise speak against the truth, but be abashed of the error of thine ignorance. Look at that. See, we're not supposed to speak against the truth. See, we do we do that. We'll speak against the truth, but we'll be silent against the guy. <laughs> you know, we respect man, but then we'll disrespect the most high. Yeah, because you know, David has some X amount of wives. So then we speak in foolishness. Wait a minute, brother. Christ said the husband of one wife. What do you say? Well, David said, the Lord said unto my Lord. That's what David said. David acknowledged Christ as his Lord. So David has a Lord. And David's, the Lord said to David's Lord, sit down on my right hand, sit here on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So David gave homage to Christ. So how are we stopping at David like David's telling us, that's just scams, brother. Psycho tricks. Witchcraft. Brothers that have used Esau's psychology, learned it in, in their police academies and different school, schooling systems because Esau pushes psychology like the way Abraham and Isaac Jacob study the scriptures. Esau pushes psychology. That's, that's the philosophy of all philosophies. Playing games. So when brothers learn this left-handed wisdom, try to mix it with scriptures, they think they're doing something. All they're doing is, like David said, let their snare, let their table be made a snare and a stumbling block. Why? Because you can't lay another foundation that have already been laid. Christ is our foundation. So if you're trying to mix the id with the superego and all this other foolishness like they got in psychology, eventually what's going to happen? You're going to be confounded like the, was, the wise was confounded. Because the wisdom of the Most High, to tell you the wisdom of this world is foolishness to the Most High. And the wisdom of the Most High have confounded the wise. See? So I'm sa I've said police because certain brothers in the past have tried to use that and still using that. Them psycho tricks. And word, word trickology, semantics. And playing games on the congregation plan. That's wickedness, brother. So we're supposed to speak against that, but don't speak against the truth. We're supposed to, hey, wait a minute. $500 for CD set? Who said that? Oh, brother so-and-so. What? Hold on. Get the scripture. Not for filthy lucre's sake. Well, see, 
it doesn't really mean that. Oh, what does it mean? Well, because the, the brother, please, scripture. We don't want to hear nothing else, man. As soon as they start coming sideways with, see, well, this or that, and then not everything's in the Bible, brother, you already done lost. Not everything is in the Bible. How are we going to be that proud? You in the Bible. The part that says the most high going to jack people up. Talking that. We ain't supposed to be talking like that. But when we're going after another God, brother, we be blinded in the lust of our, the foolishness and the lust of our hearts, brother. That's what it really be. It be those foolish and hurtful lusts, brother, that be blinding the people of the Most High, the children of Israel. We're supposed to be the people of the Most High. So what we're telling you, we be telling you because that's what the scriptures say. And then we throw in a few experiences of what it actually was said or happened. We ain't going to lie. We're going to tell, hey, that's what happened. There's a lot of that. Sometimes we was involved. We was off. But we ain't trying to hide. or we very transparent and teach the truth, brother. Teach about Christ. Enough of this foolishness, brother. The sufferings and the foolishness that comes from man-pleasing and pra praising men. It's very detrimental, brother, and it doesn't go away in a night or a week. You bear those sins, brother, because we put man above God. And the most high, you're sitting there on the throne, he don't come down and stop. He don't do that. He say, man, and send Christ to show him. And Christ, them scriptures be going out, we be missing the point. <laughs> situation or scripture or brother hey i got a question should we be doing bam threw him out that was christ trying to intervene through that brother he got thrown out that's why brother we have to repent as a people and you say well, what was that guy no all of us played a part we were silent or we wanted to say something or we we, we should have said we didn't say something what scripture is that? Well, Lord, you know, if I would have said something, they would have... Nah. We have to deal right, brother. We can't blame others while we do things. So. Can't say, oh, I was afraid I was going to be thrown out. We can't, that Christ ain't going to accept that. We got to repent. You know, a, a good... A, when you, I want to read verse 27, right? It says, Make not thyself an underling to a foolish man. A foolish man is a man that promotes sin, that doesn't speak according to sound doctrine. We're not to be underlings under foolish men. Christ is our master, not foolish man. Neither accept the person of the mighty. See, there we go again. Man pleasing. Right, brothers can quote scriptures and, and sound convincing and put the fear of God in you, not the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. How should I never put, use fear tactics on the people? He told his disciples, y'all going to leave me too? Oh, y'all going to leave me too? He didn't say, what? Then start, I'm going to do this and that. that. Christ, he told us, he said, y'all going to leave me too? Christ don't put a gun to nobody, brother. You understand? Because Christ did what he did willingly. To die for him. He would battle. He would. Man, Satan came hard, man. Christ almost died. When you read it, when with the right before he he, he was the, they came to arrest him. Man, that was the part. What's it? Oh, we read it last week. That was. He was take this cup of trembling from me, according to that will. He was praying the most. He was trembling. Take this. Take that cup of trembling from me. Give me the spirit to endure. These sufferings that's going to lead to my crucifixion. Because he knew in the end he, it's going, he would be risen from the dead and ascend to his father in heaven. And, and in his presence there is joy forevermore. He did it willingly, brother. Nothing Christ did was for self-glory or self-promotion. Neither, what did it say? Neither accept the person of the mighty. We're not to have respect to persons. Brothers been in the truth this amount of years. They can quote scriptures, teach them, break them down. They're not above the scriptures. 
Remember that. None of us are above the scriptures. I'm telling y'all young brothers, man, don't be sleeping. That spirit going, that spirit, of, listen, Satan ain't, he ain't taking a vacation. He coming back. Got shut it down. Then it says, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. We have to strive unto the truth unto what? Death. Then the Lord will fight for us. So we talk, are we supposed to be talking about who going to take the kingdom? We, remember how we say that? How we say it? I forgot. Uh, who's going to? We say it. How we say it? Who's going to? We're going to take the kingdom. We're going to take the kingdom. I forgot how we used to do it. Yeah, we're going to kill, 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 and we're going to take the, the saints of the most. I shall. What we going to? But we kept saying, we, we going to do this. We're going to take the kingdom. The, the, script, the, the scriptures do prophesy of Israel obtaining the kingdom. That's the elect that endure faithfully to the end. But for us to put ourselves in there already, that's pride talk. That's pride talk. So now let's go to Job. And then we're going to, that's the right time? One, one ten? Okay. So let's go to Job. So we're going to kind of go through these scriptures here. But let's finish up the scripture in Job. Yeah. Yeah. I was done. You can read the rest on your own, First Peter 5. So let's go to Job 20, what was it, 23? Job 23, 31? Job, Job 32, 21. Sorry. So now it says, Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. We read that in Ecclesiasticus, right? We're not, have to have, we're not to have respect to persons. Neither let me give flattering titles on the man. Every day, we're supposed to be promoting Yahweh, shine, praising him. There's not one day where we're going to sit and we're going to praise this brother and that brother. We're not, we, we cannot do that, man. That's in the past. So we, it'd be the high holy days and we praising men. Let's honor and respect this brother and that brother for their work and service. Clap. Clapping. That's what we used to do on the high holy day. Here's the Lord's Passover and we're promoting men. Christ was on the cross for six hours and spilled his blood for our sin and we got the nerve to praise men for their service but they was the one on the cross? This is madness, man. Giving accolades, honor, titles on high holy days. We supposed to be promoting the Most High and Yahweh Shai. We supposed to be commemorating the righteous acts of the Lord towards us. But we talking about breaking that scripture down wrong, Judges 5.11, where it talks about there they shall rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. What righteous acts that have we ever done to the Lord? Our righteousness is filthy rags. What righteousness have we ever done to the Lord? What righteousness have we done? None. So the righteous acts of the Lord that we're rehearsing, the word rehearse means commemorate or celebrate, is the righteous acts of the Most High towards us. The deliverance of our forefathers out of Egypt. That's the righteous acts of the Lord that we're to rehearse, commemorate, and celebrate. The destruction of Nicanor. The Feast of Dedication. How the Most High provided for us in, in, in the wilderness of 40 years, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths. We're to, we're to rehearse the righteous acts of the Sabbath day. Who instituted the Sabbath day? Yahweh Shai through the power and wisdom of the Most High. So we're rehearsing, meaning we're commemorating and celebrating the righteous acts of the Lord towards us. Let's get that real quick, Judges 5.11. And what's the scripture that go with that? 1 Samuel 12.7? Go to Judges 5.11. See, here we go, praising ourselves again. We're to rehearse the righteous acts, meaning we're, we're to keep the Most High's commandments. We are to keep the Most High's commandments. The scriptures tell you that, that the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust in this present world. How we're to live righteously and soberly in this present world. But Judges 5.11 ain't talking about righteousness that we do. But once again, 
when the praise of, of men is the foundation of the doctrine, the breakdown of the scriptures is going to go into praising of men. Y'all see that? But when we make Yahweh shy of the head, then we see Christ in those scriptures. That, then we're going to get, then we're on the right track. Judges 5.11. There's a song that the boy and Barak was singing to the Most High in Christ because of a great deliverance that just took place by the hand of the enemies, right? So I'm going to read verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the place of drawing water... The noise of the archers not talking about ICBM nuclear missiles. There you got brothers twisting that. It's actually being delivered from the weapons that the nations came up, you know, that, that fought against us, they came with. So I say, they that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water. What was, what was the Samaritan, the Israelite sister Samaria doing at Jacob's well? When Christ came to her. She was what? Drawing water. You got brothers talking about, talking about America. The place of drawing water is America. And the noise of the archers is the nuclear bombs. Y'all remember that breakdown? I remember it. I know Mike, you probably remember Lloyd's, Anala, Call the Mafia, Shemaya one, the Mafia. Y'all remember that breakdown, right? Everything's got to be the white man, America. Nuclear bombs. Ain't nothing about the Most High, though. We never praise in the Most High. But we say his name. Oh, yeah, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, all that. They that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the place of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of who? The Lord. What does that mean? That it's not talking about here, we're going to keep the Sabbath to the best of our ability and the Passover to the best of our ability. That's not what this scripture is saying. Are we to keep the Passover and the Sabbath day and all the high holy days? Yes, but is that what the born Barak is saying through the Holy Spirit of the Most High? No. That's why I said there they shall rehearse. That word rehearse in the Hebrew means to celebrate, to commemorate. What are we celebrating and commemorating? The righteous acts of the Most High. Just like this deliverance that you read in the fourth chapter. And the next part breaks it down as far as what that previous statement meant. Okay, right. Let's read the next part because it's going to break down the previous statement. Thank you, brother. Even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages. The Most High's villages in Israel. Then the people of the Lord shall go down to the gates. And what? Rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. We're going to go to the gates of the city and we're going to commemorate, celebrate the righteous acts of the Lord that he did toward us. Not talking about America, the place of drawing water. It's talking about in our own land. Our own land where we would draw water and feed our, drink water ourselves, feed our cattle like the Israelite woman in Samaria. The noise of the archers actually being delivered from the, the, uh, uh, the enemy's weapons that they came up, you know, fought us, you know, came up against us with. They came with the bow and spear and, and their weapons of war. We would see here that, but the Lord would deliver us. He's done that in the, in the history of the Maccabees. Remember, we didn't have sword and spear. We, we prayed and we fought. And the Most High delivered us. Same thing. And what do we do when the Most High deliver us? Did we praise ourselves? Yeah, we bad. We bad. Yeah, we did this, this, and that. Judas gave the praise and the glory to Yahweh who gave us the strength of victory. Judas mandates, we're going to celebrate this day. The Feast of Dedication, the other one, the Feast of Destruction of Nicanor. So when we keep in the Feast of Dedication of the altar, we are rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord towards us. Who brought us that deliverance from, from the Greeks? After Antiochus came in the temple and defiled the temple. And for three years it was left desolate. Who gave us the power to overcome this Esau, the Greeks, to over, overturn them and, and rededicate the temple and cleanse it? The Most High. 
Let's go to 1 Samuel, I think it's 12, right? Let's go to 1 Samuel 12 and 7. So we got to get these breakdown. It's not even old wine. It's Mad Dog 2020, brother. It's Manischewitz. It's not, it, ain't, it ain't even old wine. You got brother talking about, I'm going to hold on to the old wine. Brother, that ain't even old wine. That's, that's just Mad Dog 2020. All these other, you know, $2 beers you drinking, man. 1 Samuel 12 and 6. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. It is who? Who advanced Moses and Aaron in Egypt? Yahweh, Bashom, Yahweh Shai, the Christ of Nazareth, right? And brought your fathers out of the land of Egypt. Did we bring ourselves out of Egypt or did the Most High deliver us out of Egypt? The Most High delivered us out of Egypt. Now therefore stand still that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. Now we understand what it meant by him, Judges 5.11. There they shall rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. It's not talking about us, any righteousness that we're going to do to the Lord. We're celebrating and commemorating the righteous acts that the Most High did for us. So that he gets the glory. The Most High, in the name of Christ. Now, let's go to Malachi 4 and 4. We got to purge out the old leaven that we may become what? A new lump. We got to put off that spirit of praising and worshiping men, and we got to put on Yahweh Shai so we could be the, a new creature. New wine, new bottles, right? We got to make them new bottles for the new wine, brother. The fermentation of the new wine, you put it in old wine skin bottles, the fermentation of that new wine is too strong. What's going to start happening, it's going to, the wine skin bottle is going to start bursting. And the wine spill on the floor, the bottle fall apart, and there's nothing left. Well, Christ said, unless a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of the Most High. We got put off the worshiping of men. And, and now we, we're going to go into... Reincarnation, that's a devil doctrine. We got to take that leaven out and teach the resurrection of Yahweh Shai from the dead. Now we do that, we're on a pathway that's going to lead to eternal life. Y'all understand? We got to put out the doctrine, the devil doctrine of reincarnation. We're going to put that out, and what are we putting in its place? The resurrection from the dead at the second coming of Yahweh Shai. That is the resurrection that that woman that had the seven sons were looking forward to. They weren't looking to come back, you know, 800 years later, uh, you know, in America, and then they coming on the earth. That's not the resurrection that they, that's, that's reincarnation. They weren't looking for reincarnation. They were looking for the resurrection from the dead at the second coming of Christ. Y'all understand how important this is? Because if we teach reincarnation then we're not going to obtain salvation because there, there is no reason. Because the scripture says it's appointed for men to die once and then the judgment. You live once, you die at the second coming of Christ, the dead shall rise, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame and contempt. As a matter of fact, let's